Hi all, and welcome to lesson two of the Free Code Camp Blockchain and Solidity and Smart Contract course. In this video, we're gonna learn about what's called the factory pattern and how smart contracts can actually deploy other smart contracts. So for this video, definitely be sure to have watched the last video, watch lesson one before you come to this video. And remember, everything associated with this video and with the code and with this lesson is in the GitHub link in the description. So with that, let's jump in and have fun. All the code, tips, and links that we're gonna be working with can be found in our course repository. You can scroll down to lesson two, storage factory, click it here, and we can see all the code we're gonna be working with. Good luck. All right, so we've done it. We've got our first contract out of the way. We're understanding some of the basics of solidity. Now let's move onward. Let's get a little bit more advanced with what we're gonna do with our smart contracts. And let's build what's called the factory pattern of smart contracts. So we have our simple storage contract here, which is great. It allows us to store numbers and store favorite numbers associated with different people, and this is great. What if though, I wanna have a lot of these simple storage contracts deployed? I wanna give people the ability to generate and deploy their own lists based off of this contract. This is where the factory pattern comes into play. So let's go ahead and create a new contract. So in this contracts folder, I'm gonna do new file. And we're gonna call this storage factory.sol. And now we'll have a storage factory.sol. Now the way that we're gonna do this is that you need simple storage and storage factory in the same folder. I have both of them in this contracts folder. But if you have them outside or in a different folder, that's okay. Just make sure what, wherever they are, they're in the exact same folder. So let's figure out how to get a contract to actually deploy another contract. We're gonna add those basic pieces that we added in that simple storage.sol. We'll add the SPDX license identifier, which will be MIT. We'll choose our Solidity version, which will be Pragma Solidity, and we'll say anything in the six range. And then we'll create our contract. We'll say contract storage factory, and we'll create our brackets here. And I'm gonna do command S or compile, whatever you wanna do, things are looking good here. Great, so how can this contract deploy a simple storage contract? Well, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is actually import this simple storage into our storage factory contract. We need to import it so that our storage factory contract knows what a simple storage contract even looks like. The way that we can import it is by doing the command import and then the file path that the simple storage is located. So the file path for this is gonna be at dot slash simple storage dot soul. This means that simple storage is in the exact same directory as storage factory. Doing this line is equivalent to copying everything in this contract bit, coming over to storage factory and pasting it above. You can even save and compile and have two contracts in the same file. Now what's interesting about having two contracts in the same file is that when you go to deploy, you'll actually have a choice of which one you want to deploy. And it's the same thing if I do that import statement. So if I delete all this and I go back to import dot slash simple storage dot soul, in our deploy tab still, you'll see that we still have our choice of which contract we actually want to deploy. So this is how we actually import a contract or import any type of file that we want so that our contract knows what that contract looks like and can do. So if we want this contract to then be able to deploy a simple storage contract, we're of course gonna to have to create a function that can do that. So we'll do function, we'll call it create simple storage contract. We'll make this a public function. We'll do our little open and close bracket in here. The way we can generate a contract of simple storage type is by using a new keyword. So let's create a simple storage variable We'll say a variable of type simple storage contract. We'll name this variable simple storage with a lowercase s equals new simple 
storage. What this line is saying is we're saying we're going to create an object of type simple storage contract. We're going to name it simple storage with a lowercase s. And we're going to say this is going to be a new simple storage contract. And we're saying the simple storage contract takes no input parameters. Of course, if we deploy this contract as is by going to our deploy tab, choosing the storage factory, staying on a JavaScript VM, deploying, scrolling down, we have this function that doesn't return anything. So we're creating new contracts, but we can't really read where those contracts are being created. We'd have to look on a block explorer like Etherscan or something. So let's make a way for us to keep track of all the different simple storage contracts that we deploy. Let's put them in a list or in an array. So what we can do is we can say simple storage array of visibility public, and we'll call it simple storage array. We'll initialize this simple storage array. And every time we deploy, we create one of these new simple storage contracts, we'll add it to our simple storage array. So we'll do simple storage array dot push, and we'll push this simple storage variable. So again, I'm compiling or hitting command S, delete that most recent contract. We'll choose the storage factory and not the simple storage. And we'll hit deploy. Now, if we scroll down to our storage factory, we have this blue button, which stands for our simple storage array. If we try to see what's at index zero, we get an error, of course, because we haven't added anything to it yet. If I click this create simple storage contract orange button here, now I've created a transaction that's going to create a new simple storage contract and push it onto our simple storage array. Now, if I try to access the zero with index or the first index of this array, I'm going to get this address here. This is the address that this simple storage contract was deployed to. So we've successfully deployed a contract to the blockchain from another contract. And this, of course, is really exciting. Now, we can actually do more than just deploy the contracts. We can actually deploy contracts from another contract and then call those functions as well. So let's create a new function where we call this store function. And we'll also create a function where we call the retrieve function from our storage factory. So we'll do function storage factory store. We're going to shorthand it by saying SF store. We'll have it take uint256 simple storage index and a uint256 underscore simple storage number. We'll make this a public variable as well in our little brackets here. And the reason I'm choosing a simple storage index is because we're going to choose which simple storage contract in our list that we want to interact with. And then we're also going to pass a simple storage number to call on the store function, which of course we need to pass a favorite number to. Anytime that you interact with a contract, you need two things. You need the address of the contract you want to interact with, and you also need the ABI. For us, we figured out that we're going to push and get this address from this simple storage array. We can get the ABI or the application binary interface from this import. We'll explain the application binary interface a little bit more later. For now, just know that in order for us to interact with this simple storage contract, we can just do simple storage and then we'll pass this simple storage the address of that simple storage contract. To get the address of that simple storage contract, we'll say grab the address inside the simple storage array at index simple storage index. This will return that contract that we want to interact with. So we could even say simple storage simple 
storage equals simple storage at that address in the array. Once we get this contract, we can then call any and all of its functions. So we could call simple storage dot store this simple storage number. Now, if we compile this, we go to our deploy tab, deploy the factory, hit deploy, open this up. We can see we have a couple different functions here. We of course have our create simple storage function, which creates the contract and adds it to our array. We now have this SF store, which stores a number to one of those contracts on this array. And then we have a lens into that simple storage contract. So if I create a simple storage contract, I can now store on that zero width contract on that first contract, any number that I want, like 55. Of course, I can't really see that 55 because we didn't add a retrieve functionality. We didn't add a way to actually listen or read or retrieve that favorite number that we got. So let's add that now. So we'll create a new function called SF get, and this will take a uint 256 simple storage index and as a parameter, and we'll choose one of these contracts on this array and return its favorite number, calling the retrieve function on that contract. So since we're just going to be reading state, this can be a public view function that will return a uint 256. To do this, we need to access that contract once again. So we'll say simple storage, simple storage equals simple storage at that address of simple storage array at index underscore simple storage index and call. And we can return, return simple storage dot, we call this retrieve function. I'm just gonna copy paste it so I don't spell it wrong. Simple storage, we'll put the semicolon here too, and here. Now, if we compile this, go to our deploy tab, delete the most recent, choose the storage factory and hit deploy. We can see we now has have an SF get function. So let's go ahead, create a simple storage contract. We'll store a function on the zero with contract. We'll store 55 as its favorite number and we'll hit that. And then for SF get, we'll see if we can get the favorite number of the zero with contract. And we do indeed get 55. Awesome. We can actually even refactor this code to be a little bit simpler here. We don't need to save this simple storage contract as a variable here. We can actually just call retrieve on this whole section here, paste retrieve at the end, and just turn like this. The same goes for our SF store. We can delete saving it as a variable. We can copy this dot store, paste it at the end here, and delete this as well. Now we'll compile, De delete the most recent, we'll deploy the storage factory. And if we go into it, create a simple storage, store the number of 55, see what's at the zeroth index, and we do indeed see 55. So this is really cool. This is a way for us to actually deploy contracts and interact with contracts from another contract. Now to deploy a contract, we do need all the functionality of that contract imported. However, to interact with a contract, 
we don't need all of the functionality. We'll learn about interfaces in the next lesson, which will allow us to actually interact with a contract without having all of the functions defined. And now I'm gonna show you something really cool. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool. Symbol storage has got a lot of really cool functions and maybe I want all these functions inside my storage factory. I want my storage factory to be able to create simple storage contracts and I want it to be a simple storage contract itself. Well, what I can do is my storage factory can actually inherit all the functions of simple storage without me having to copy paste all these functions and all these variables over to storage factory. What I can do is I can do Solidity's version of inheritance. I can say contract storage factory is of type simple storage or is of contract simple storage. And just by doing this line right here, my storage factory contract now will have all of the functions and variables of simple storage. So it'll have a store function, a retrieve function, an add person function, a people array, a name to favorite number mapping. It'll have everything because I will inherit it with this is syntax. So if I go to my deploy tab now, let's look at what our last storage factory was. All we did to change this was add is simple storage. And we can see just the four functions that we originally added. If I delete this now, if I save and compile the storage factory, let's go ahead and deploy storage factory. If we open this up now, we can see not only do we have all the functions originally defined in our storage factory, but we additionally have all the functions from our simple storage. And awesome, you've completed the second lesson. We've learned about some incredibly powerful tools here. We've learned how to import entire chunks of code from other files into our files. We've learned how to do inheritance. We've learned how to deploy contracts from our contract. And then we've learned how to interact with different contracts from outside of our contract. Well done. Now is a great time to take a breath, take a breather, and review what you've learned. All right, there we go. Do you feel smarter? You look smarter. Congratulations on completing another lesson. Excellent work. The next lesson after this is one of the most important lessons in the entire course. Because in this one, we introduce hybrid smart contracts and we start talking about how to actually implement them and how to actually use them in our blockchain applications. So with that, I leave you to it. Good luck. We'll see you soon.